Are you a bride or groom to be or just someone who wants to know how to plan and set their wedding budget and know all the list of items you need before your big day? I am a wedding vendor and a planner and I've helped so many people and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you all the tips and tricks that I know and have learned over the years to help you make your journey easier. So if you're interested in watching this video, let's go into it. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Victoria and on this channel I share with you tips and tricks to help you live your very best life. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you tips on how you can set your wedding budget and as a bonus, I'm going to give you a very detailed checklist that you can use to guide you through your wedding journey. First of all, let's look at this very detailed checklist and at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use this checklist to create the perfect wedding budget for you if you do find this video helpful don't forget to hit that like button this in fact sends this signal to youtube that this video is actually helpful and i would honestly truly appreciate it and don't forget to join this beautiful family by clicking on the subscribe button and also don't forget to turn on your post notifications so that every single time i release a new video you be the first to know with all that said grab your pen grab your wedding planning journal if you don't have you can just grab any paper any your ipad your tablet your laptop whatever writing material your phone anything that you easily have access to just get comfortable because this is about to get very very detailed when i was planning my wedding i struggled so much with budget planning so i knew how much i actually wanted to spend but i didn't know exactly how i should you know structure it in such a way that it will go around everything because i didn't have a comprehensive list of everything that i actually needed i binged on a lot of videos articles research asked people you know I was everywhere and I came up with this comprehensive list that I'm about to share with you. This is a guide for the typical expenses you'll find in a Nigerian wedding. Also, I'll try to list services and also rental items that you know you can easily hire. Please note that this is an example of a list that you can use in your wedding, but feel free to add or subtract anything that you do not like or you would love to incorporate into your wedding. And this all depends on if you're having a low key or a flamboyant wedding. If you're working on a tight budget i recommend that you also watch my video where i shared tips and tricks on how to plan a nigerian wedding on a budget i'll leave the link just right above so the first thing on my list in no particular order is the bride's outfits and accessories now under that you have her wedding gown now this can be pre a pre-used gown or a new gown or a hired gown now when i say pre-used if you're working on a very very tight budget you can go to a friend that has already um, but her wedding gown used it is your size or a sister an auntie anybody you can use that which means that technically you're getting it for free or at a very minimal cost if you have a lot of money to spend you can also go ahead and get a new gown now even under getting a new gown you can go towards sewing like technically creating that dream wedding gown in your head by going to a fashion designer or you can get an already designed wedding gown so these are two ways you can go with the new and also you can hire wedding gowns you know you can even hire a new wedding gown depending on the case it might already have been worn by a previous bride or whatever but these are all the range of options when it comes to your wedding gown so next you have the bride shoes now you can go two ways about this you can either get one pair and use it for the entire occasion some people like to get two pairs now you get one very stylish shoe which might not be all that comfortable to be honest but looks appealing that's the one the cameraman is going to get you know video wise and everything and you can also wear that to church and use to take your pictures but by the time you get to your reception venue you might want to get into something much much comfortable so that you can dance be very comfortable you know have fun at your reception because let me tell you this wedding is only once 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 so make sure you're very 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 comfortable if your if your reception gown is you know this very flowing you know it has this flowing train and all of that you can even wear a very fanciful slippers nobody's going to see it but just make sure you're truly truly comfortable in whatever you're wearing the next thing is the bridal accessories now this depends on what you're wearing in terms of your gown 
Some gowns might need a necklace, some of them might not need. So you know you're talking about your accessories, your earring, your necklace, your veil. Make sure too that your wedding gown, if it's a ball gown, it has the underskirt. Um, which other thing? We have the gele, we have your accessories. Um, if your your reception outfit is a different color from your let's say you're wearing you know the traditional wedding gown is white and your reception outfit is like gold you might want to maybe switch your accessories it all depends it's not compulsory and also if you're doing a bridal robe so that you can take pictures before while you're doing your makeup in the hotel before you wear your gown you also want to put that into consideration now the next thing is the beauty like the bridal beauty so what i'm talking about is your makeup your hair your nails you know any other thing that you know you want to use if you're going to be doing facials before your wedding you also want to put that in if you're doing any anything that concerns your physical outlook you know your face and all of that your your nails all that you want to put that into consideration so get down the service charge for all of that I also mentioned the bride's jewelry but i also want to i think i skipped out the bride's bouquet this is very very important you know if you need a purse so that you can put in your phone or something else like that also put that into consideration i think at this point you also want to um maybe you can put this as a different list but i'll just say you know if you're if you're giving your ashibi outfits that's your, your both your bridal train and your ashwabi you want to just put all of that in if you're going to be selling your fabric put that in if you're going to be buying for free put that in um, put your gele put your your lace or ankara whichever one you're doing and also um put your bridal train outfit in it the next thing is the groom's suit and accessories so just like it's very self-explanatory you have the groom's suit you have his um, accessories like his cufflinks, his belt, his tie or bow tie, suspenders if you're using that. Um, you have his shoes, you have his, um, his pocket handkerchief, you have the flower that they usually put, um, botanier, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but yeah, you have that one. And then I think you should also, if you're making a proper wedding budget, you should also put his haircut and his beard shaving if he has beards. I know that you might say, ah, is that one a cost? It's a cost though, just put it in, just put it in. But the next thing on our list is the wedding stationery and souvenirs. You're going to ask yourself whether you want to print wedding invitations. Now lately a lot of people have been skipping that part because social media is so powerful. So what they do is that you just make a soft copy and send, you know, online to people. But if you're inviting a lot of people, especially people that, you know, it would just be improper due to our culture to just send them like an online invitation you might make a few copies to send to those kind of people yes that includes your invitations and your program the next thing is your wedding souvenirs i'm not really going to be going into details on whether you should be doing a lot of souvenirs or minimal souvenirs because this is just a general checklist yes just write souvenirs and depending on your budget you're not going to decide how many souvenirs you're going to buy and what kind of souvenirs you're going to buy this is very very optional but a lot of people do get special gifts for their bridesmaids or their groomsmen if this is you and you're saying oh my god i'm so thankful to you guys you know i want to give you guys separately then you can also put that into your wedding budget the second option is to make sure that after getting your souvenirs you pack out you know your bridesmaid souvenirs and any other person that you really want to give, maybe a person is in there, you get that out and preserve it so that whether they're very busy or not, they will always have a souvenir to go with after your wedding. So the next thing is your wedding venue and decoration. If you're having a reception, you want to put that into consideration and also put in the price of the wedding decoration. If your wedding hall is empty, you have to put in the cost of chairs and tables too. Now the next one on our list is food and drinks. So under food and drinks, we have the wedding cake. You have small chops if you're using small chops and all of that. Now the next thing is the actual food. This is where you have to really, really say we're working on a budget. If your budget is vast and this is something you really want to invest in, then you can have a lot of menu and um, you know go versatile, have local, intercontinental, normal Niger food and all of that. But if not, you can walk around that to make sure that it fits your budget. 
also you have your drinks your drinks you can have that classified under wine soft drinks and every other thing that you want to serve at your wedding make sure you also include water and the next thing that many people overlook overlook is wedding transportation even if somebody is giving you their car even if someone is giving you their car to use and all of that make sure that you also put into consideration that you fuel this person's car someone cannot give you their car and you also expect them to give you fuel if a person offers that's a different case but since you're creating your budget you need to make sure that you're putting into consideration that you're going to be fueling this car and now if you do not have a car or have someone that you can hire a car from then you know you're going to be working with a rental service company for the rentals i know i've already mentioned tables and chairs but you need to also put in your dj microphones um speakers and a generator set depending on the venue and what will be needed so the other vendors that you're going to be needing is a photographer and a videographer you would also need a DJ, also need an MC, and sometimes some people also get in live bands. It all depends on what you want to do. You also have ushers, food servers. This you can switch, you know, with your friends and family, but if you want an official service, this is actually much more reliable to make sure things are done perfectly. Have your makeup artist. If it's based on um, a strict IV, you want to have security, and um, bouncers also if it's an option for you, you can get a wedding planner or someone who you know can actually handle your events while you're up on stage having fun you know that someone has your back during your occasion now finally i recommend that you leave out at least 10 percent of your wedding budget and title it miscellaneous things always come up in weddings something might be under the budget something might be over the budget something might not just you might have missed out something that you really wanted or stuff like that or something might go wrong so always make sure there's an extra fee you know an extra amount that you guys are stashing somewhere in case of emergency so now i'm going to show you how you can use this checklist to create your ideal wedding budget first of all i expect that maybe this is the first time you're watching this video you can save it and watch it again and get a separate journal where you write down all these things that i've mentioned now the next thing you want to do is to create um, a price section right beside it where you're going to write out the varying list of all these items now how are you going to get the varying list you want to go to your local market ask people you know do your research check online ask your vendors go around ask different people and separate your list into the high the low and the affordable now depending on the wedding that you're having if you're if you're going towards an affordable wedding you want to total everything that you have um, listed and whatever figure you get at the end is going to be your wedding budget now if you look at this wedding budget and realize oh it's too high or it's too low then you can now start looking at all the individual items and start swapping. For instance, if your wedding budget was 500,000 and by the time you total it, it's 600,000, you want to look at maybe the food or the drinks and say, okay, what is it that I can reduce? Or look at the service charge of a particular person and say, okay, can I go for a lower budget? You know, till your wedding budget is fully adjusted to what fits you if you like i can also do a video on how to avoid exceeding your wedding budget so once you've compiled this list i want you to keep this with you every single place you go so yes if you want to avoid overspending during your wedding this is the way to go it all starts and ends with having a wedding budget i know this can be so overwhelming but if you look at it i've tried to simplify it it's simply about knowing or having um, a range of items and picking from each of them to really suit your pocket no two weddings can be the same but the most important thing is that you're happy your spouse is happy you guys have maximum fun document this exciting moment of your lives and understand that after the wedding comes the marriage don't have a flamboyant wedding and a broke marriage that being said to if you can afford it go all out on your wedding and make sure that you have a beautiful time so that's it for this video if you would like more um, wedding related videos let me know what you would like to see in the comment section and i'll be sure 
to check that out. So yes, I want to thank you very much if you're still watching up to now. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know how this video benefited you. And I'll see you.